Hello, and welcome back to our lucky play. This is Sammy's dad. And the first thing I need to do right now is harvest, is sell some of my beef. Over a stack of the stuff here I'm getting from my, my uh, cows up there. I find I'm, I have to watch what I'm eating now. No. Not because of that. It's because my um, butcher is giving me plenty of other things to eat at the moment. I need, I need to get rid of them. I'm at the age where, I'm of the age where you don't throw away food and I have plenty of chicken. So. No golden carrots for the moment. That's all right. This is good enough. But the big thing I'm working on today oops, more, is not eating, but all these villagers, uh, one thing I hinted in the last episode is the finally getting, making use of that cave spider spawner downstairs. And I found a nice design I'm going to make use of. And I've started, I've started gathering some things together for that. Got some iron trap doors, got some hoppers. Oak stairs. I think I might need, maybe not. So it looks like the plans. Yeah, oh, that's not good. But yeah, to make, make use of some of these books that I can't quite put on my, on my my items. This is all set. The hell is good. But the rest of my stuff, I need, I need more XP to be able to use it properly. So I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get that going and I'll see you down there. Bye. Okay. So I did a little bit of prep again here. I added some water in the corners. I haven't actually broken it so that I can go slow. Uh, I had water here by mistake. I, that was for a different design. Don't need those. Get rid of those. Those two waters I believe are all that I will need. I also added water up here. This is so that when the uh, Spiders decide to climb up to freedom, like I was about to do. They'll come up here and drown. I like this. Gives them a nice mining to the helmet. Okay, I'm slowing down. Sorry. So, now if I break these, they should. Blow in a nice V pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now I break everything that's dry. That's my way out right now. And I'll get back to the rest of this. Well, I kind of messed up here, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I thought I was recording either replay or live of the actual creation process, but I messed up. Sorry. Um, but I can show you the inner workings of it through replay. 
and I can show you how it works now. And of course, there'll be a link in the in the description to the original plans and the tutorial. And I can show you how I amended those, my own design. First, I'll show you the I'll show you a little brief clip of the inside, how it works, and how how it looks from the spider's point of view. And then I'll show you what I've done and how I use it. So they spawn up in here and go down through this area with the gates, through this little channel, and you can go either to the upper or lower area, and that's where I kill them. So we've got a few here, and I will show you about this, but first things first. One thing that that little clip there just showed me is that I've got too big of a window into here. Oops. Okay. So one thing I changed. Okay, I need to take care of this first. One thing I changed is I added anvils here, and these are not just for their function as places to, you know, combine books and such, but they are the perfect, perfect width. So the challenge with this is to be at a width, at a position that is close enough to be able to reach the upper spiders, but not so close to uh, be bitten by the lower spiders. There's So that's why I am. So also, I have two ways of collecting XP from them. So if I stand on just the very edge of this here, right, right on the edge of the block and the anvil, I can I can kill the kill them just barely reach the top ones, or so I claim. There we go. For some reason they seem to want to. I shouldn't have to use a bow and arrow. I, I have an idea from from Mo Yang. Make it impossible for spiders to climb on slime or some or tiny blocks or something. So the idea here is once they're all gone from here, I can just oops, is it gone? I thought just go over here and quickly collect everything. All the XP. Drop up every all the string that I've collected. As you can see, it's doing quite well as far as resources, but my Show you the sword I got, courtesy of this thing, plus my 
friends in the trading hall, scooping out a band of arthropods, spending and looting. Although I suspect at this point looting might be overkill. So yeah, I just slide back and forth right here, right here on the edge of this block, and I can take out all of them. Hi. And it works pretty well. Yep. I did make one change in my game. I'll show you this. I changed myself to, to normal. I toyed briefly with the idea of going to hard. As easy as you're just getting really too easy, I think. I might still go to hard, but I but that's gonna take some planning. Mostly because I'll go upstairs and show you why. I'll, I'll meet you up there. So a couple of things to notice in, in here. First thing is that I put dirt in front of all my exterior doors. I was briefly on hard mode and the zombies were breaking down my doors so I kind of made a point of keeping them from doing that. In fact, they got one of them. Which I haven't bothered to replace yet. I'll get to it. I also added some more data packs. So now I can easily see when crops are ready to harvest. Not that that was a big problem with the nether wart, but for some other crops, with my color blindness and such, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. So now it's easy to see. Yay! So I think I'm going to replace these with iron doors. I don't use I don't use them that often. And so that way. I won't have to worry about the dirt. Zombies breaking them down. The, in, the doors to the inner courtyard here are not a problem because there's gates here. And the only danger there is that someone might leave a gate open. Really? Who would do that? Oh yeah. Right. Oops. Okay. I'm not naming names. Someone left a gate open. And it's a single player world. Yeah. Oh well. Meanwhile. Things are going well in here. Plenty of bone meal. And I've started a rudimentary brown mushroom farm. Once I find a red mushroom, I'll start a red mushroom farm. I want to automate this. And I have an idea of how to do that. I'll show you a different world where, where that's already been done. And I'll take you there right now. I am here in a world I downloaded. I hope you recognize it. If you don't, this is the man cave of one of my favorite. <laughs> one of my favorite YouTubers, Etho. Oh, right. Um, I've been following his series since Chocolate Island and somewhere up here leave it to me to lose it oh it's up here hang on somewhere up here it was one of the first farms he ever built. Mushroom farm.
this place is awesome. Uh, I hate to destroy this, but I want to do it. I'm going to do it in style and in survival. So there's a source mushroom there, and well, there was anyway. Oh, that's just fun. Sorry, Etho. I have a cave. Oh, that's right. Of course, my foot goes back. Distant, right, okay. Extended. Okay, so piss and drops and water flows around this area here. There's a red mushroom here. Okay. Really so straightforward. And and, and all the mushrooms flow right to here. I'll demonstrate by and lovingly hand growing. You get the idea. So I'm gonna borrow this one, this idea directly. From the man himself. Oh yeah, and that just goes directly to the pistons. I can figure this out from here. I don't need to or anything. And I'll go back to the, my own world without. And I'll stop defacing his. Feels wrong. Also has to be kept dark, so the mushrooms will grow. idea okay be back over there hello just a quick check in to see the update on how my progress on this this is my interpretation of ethos design his was made before hoppers were invented which tells you how old it is in any case this is my idea, based on his idea. Probably better ways of doing it, but this is cool. The mushroom is gonna live under here. I haven't, I haven't got any redstone yet. So, mushrooms are gonna be under these two blocks. This one is under here and here. And when the piston retracts, like this, all the mushrooms flow down into the hopper and into the chest. This 
gives them plenty of places to grow. All this area is covered in nice and dark. Plant. And the next step is to get it wired up. I think I'll probably at first just use it with the pressure plate to see how well it goes. And then later on I'll add 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 in just the hopper pop hopper clock automated. Okay, I'm back. Got the redstone in place. Fairly simple. There's a pressure plate here that powers these two redstone wires here. Goes to a torch here, inverting it. Goes to my favorite block. Powers this redstone piston. It goes, it comes a repeater, goes to this redstone piston here. Which is holding up this block. I'm I'm using this one here to hold the water back. We can test it. Water's flowing. Get this one down. Water's not flowing. I don't want to use the water. Now I'll get it created. Get all everything all nice and pretty. And come back. All right. Okay, I think it works. So let's pretend here we have our red mushroom, our gray, our brown mushroom here, and our token stand-in red mushroom, which looks rather brown at the moment, but that will change once I find a red mushroom. And look, the mushroom has grown. The darkest corner of a mushroom farm. So, as we happen to be wandering by, just minding our farm, step on the pressure plate, and move out there. Mushrooms fall, water flows, and our mushroom comes up. Cover all this up so it's nice and dark so they will grow nice and fast. The next step after that is to replace this with a hopper clock. A little more complex than just torch. And a little fitting given that it's Etho hopper clock and it's Etho's design. Uh, that is his most advanced design of anything. But. Okay. And just a quick note, as I was busy covering this up, I happened to notice that it's already working. Look at that. Mushrooms have already grown. I haven't even covered it up yet. Wow. We have a mushroom farm. Now, now all we need is a mushroom to put in it. Red variety. Well, I decided to find a red mushroom. Go out on that whole expedition to find one. And how many times can you say that you actually found a giant red mushroom before you find a small one? Well, I finally found a red mushroom.
first irony is that over the spread. A whole reason for the farm is, is the brown mushroom for the uh, fermented spider eyes. But while I'm here, I'll grab some wood. Up and down trees, and then I'll come. Then I'll head home. Okay, mission successful. I found my red mushroom, and my farm is now complete. Not missing a little bit of automation. I may do this episode or next. But let's review the episode. I have a sugar cane farm, as we all know. I have built a spider farm so I can get XP and spider eyes and string. I built a mushroom farm and, I, and now I have ready access to brown and red mushrooms. What does this all mean? Well, see you next week. And you might see me next week. Or. Why not? <laughs> see you then. If you don't see me first. Bye bye. How's the castle looking at me? Huh. Bye bye.